It's a bright sunny morning here in Stratford-upon-Avon, the 23rd of April, 466th anniversary of William Shakespeare's birthday, St. George's Day. Stratford-upon-Avon is waking up. We're here on the corner of Chapel Street and Chapel Lane under the spire of the Guild Chapel. And I'm here with Dr. Paul Edmondson, the Director of Learning and Research at the Shakespeare Birthplace Trust. And we're here to talk about a puzzle. So, Paul, what's the project and why is it important? It's called Dig for Shakespeare, and we're excavating Shakespeare's house. Shakespeare's house that he purchased in 1597, which was later demolished. And we're unearthing, we hope, new evidence to tell us what Shakespeare was really like, and to unearth things which tell us more about how he worked and lived here. So behind us is the plot of the, former, the site of former New Place. Let's go through the door of Nash's house and onto the dig. On we go. I was here three weeks ago when Stanley Wells turned over the first turf here. So much has been done in three weeks. Tell me what we're looking at. We're looking at the remains of a 1702 house, mm -hmm. and this is on the site of Shakespeare's house, New Place, which he bought in 1597, and which was built in about 1492 by Sir Hugh Clopton. So this is the site of Shakespeare's home. So what we're looking at then is a kind of a three-dimensional jigsaw puzzle with archaeology going down through layers and layers and layers of what, three separate houses built on this site trying to find the um, medieval remains of a house that Shakespeare owned. Exactly, and the jigsaw is very complicated and it's very fascinating and we're unearthing it very, very slowly because one of the things that the project is enabling us to do is to engage a, a, a wide public to come and help with the dig through volunteering their time to help us be, to become part of the project. Now, this isn't the first time this site has been excavated, isn't that right? It was excavated in 1862 by a Shakespearean scholar, James Orchard Halliwell Phillips. Uh -huh. And he was wall chasing. He wanted, he wanted to find big, <laughs> chunky walls. He, he, I think he wanted probably to unearth something like a, 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 a demolished monastery or something like that. Oh, surely what he really wanted to find was a, a trunk containing the manuscript That's of William That's what he really Shane. wanted. He wanted treasure. He was a treasure hunter. But what's fascinating about that, and because archaeological uh, approaches and questions have changed, of course, over mm -hmm. 140 years, 150 years, is that he just left a load of spoil because he was only interested in walls. So what we're, what, the reason why we're going so slowly is because we're looking at the Victorian backfill and finding all sorts of stuff in it that he just wasn't interested in. Now backfill, when Halliwell Phillips excavated, he did it in great dollops, yes, and wasn't very much concerned about what was contained in that sediment. So he just threw it back into the hole, jumbled up, and what's happening here is that you're now re-excavating that sediment and sorting through what you're finding uh, that have put decades and maybe even hundreds of years of materials cheek by jowl with each other. Is that right? Exactly. Archaeology now is a much more delicate operation. Now we can become excited mm -hmm. about changes of colour in soil, mm -hmm. about those bits and fragments of pottery, of glass, about which more later. Okay, so we're going to have a look at some of that material later, but let's see if we can get a sense of the whole site and what it might have looked like in Shakespeare's day. Let's do that. What do we think New Place looked like when Shakespeare lived here? We think it had five gables and stretched a whole Burbage plot along the front of the street. It was the second biggest house in Stratford. It was described um, in the early 16th century by John Leyland as, as a pretty house of brick and timber. It was described as a mansion house. Five gables was a sizeable dwelling. We think it had um, 22 fireplaces. We think it had um, 11 chimneys. And curiously, and very interestingly, above where we're standing, you can see the scar, the ghost, as it were, of one of those gable ends on the side of Nash's house. Oh, that's fascinating. And we know that's the gable end of New Place because the house which was rebuilt in 1702 had a roof which was quite different. 
So we're walking along the front gallery, as it were, where we think the servants lived, though I'm sceptical about that. So this is the part of the house that would have been made of timber and brick? Exactly. And facing out on the, onto the road? Yeah, and then running alongside Chapel Lane as we're turning into the corner now, the side of the house with, we think, a door, maybe about here, which comes in from the street and out into an inner courtyard space. Just with, there? Yeah, just in front of us. And then the inner house, as it were, starting somewhere here. And one of the things we're hoping the dig is going to reveal to us is where that inner house started from, because we don't know. And on my right are some remains of that inner house, which were exposed in the 1862 dig. The bricks around them, as it were, are Victorian. And these were identified as the kitchen and the brew house. Again, we don't know why or how that identification was made. So what we're looking at there, the stone, we think is the wall of the original Shakespeare house, new place, that, what, Hallowell Phillips excavated and then outlined in Victorian brick. Is that right? Uh, absolutely. And we're looking forward to removing those Victorian bricks and digging freshly around the remains of Shakespeare's house. Now, Halliwell Phillips called this the brew house and the kitchen, and we don't know how he made or why he made that attribution. What did he find here? Remember, he's interested in walls rather than artefacts in, in quite the mm -hmm. same way that we're interested in them now. And behind us is what Halliwell Phillips called a bay window. Uh, again, in, he might be right, or as I heard only yesterday, it might be a chimney the remains of a chimney from the original new place. If you imagine Shakespeare coming back to Stratford like a literary commuter to write the plays, his output on average is about two a year. This could plausibly be where Shakespeare did a lot of his writing, a place of retirement from the noise of London, mm. set back from the street of Stratford, probably with his books around him. We know he needed his books in order to write. But this plays. is also a working house. I and mean, Shakespeare bought the house in 1597, came to live here uh, entirely in 1607, mm. died here in 1616. But before that, this was a house that Anne lived in, mm. uh, that Shakespeare's daughter, Susanna and Judith, mm. grew up in, perhaps. Yes. Jermaine Greer thinks that, uh, that Anne probably uh, did uh, malt dry, and maybe even brewed on this place. That is, that it was a working property that was keeping the family finances together. I wonder if they had to be all really quiet when the master of the house came <laughs> back. But it's also, you know, it's also a house um, which is the uh, uh, social status, isn't it? Second biggest house in, in Stratford. Second biggest, only superseded by the college at the church, the biggest domestic dwelling. And it's from New Place that Shakespeare makes his major financial investments, which accrues his wealth. So we've just walked through the knot garden, which has never been excavated. That's right, we're hoping we're going to find cesspits, the bits that were thrown away, the bits that people ate or the bits that people yeah. thought weren't in, important, fragments of Tudor life. And then we've come down to this um, glass house where the archaeologists are, are using just as an impromptu space to store the stuff that they've found. So well, what have we got in front well, of us? Well, it's all carefully laid out by century and by kind. Um, 19th century artifacts, bits of pottery, a lot of animal bones from the 18th century, oyster shells. That's oyster shells, some glass over glass here. Glass over here, and this tray here contains some of the things from Shakespeare's period. So we've got some Tudor pottery, this beautiful bright green from the um, 15th and 16th centuries. Different kind of pottery there, some more green here. Oh, some, uh, this is a... Um, clay pipes. Clay pipes. These are not Tudor. These are no, a little bit older. 19, but they're these are 19th light. century. We find a lot of these on the uh -huh. side. Um, and uh, you're, you're holding the find of the week, mm -hmm. which is a fob, the bit of the um, end of a watch chain mm -hmm. from the early 18th century. With a Cornelian seal on the end, is Probably that right? from the, the Clopton family who acquired the house again into the family okay. after Shakespeare's now, time. Now, this, this dig started um, in March. How mm. long was it going on? It's going on until early September. Um, and who knows what we'll find before then, because depending on what we do find will depend on whether we continue the dig mm -hmm. and extend it further. But this is a dig that we want people to get involved in. This is a dig that's inviting the community to come and not just be a spectator, but also to be a participant. It's a fantastic opportunity for schools, for families, and for people who want to volunteer their time 
to take up a trowel and join us as we scrape away the earth. To come on site. Yes. To wash, wear a yellow to, bib. To, to wear a yellow bib. To wear a dig for Shakespeare. Be properly uh, inducted. Uh huh. And to wash artifacts. To um, help people label and to find out what they mean. To get involved. And and visitors to the site will be able to sieve the soil as well in in two large marquees which are mm. about to be erected and go through very very carefully all of the uh, the, the earth as it as it's as it's excavated. So there it is. The challenge is to dig for Shakespeare. Absolutely. Be part of it. <laughs>